Hello? Yes, could you send the four of them in, please? Yes, Lord Sugar. Lord Sugar's ready for you now. OK, well, Jim, clearly something went wrong with the pitching to the advertising agencies. Any thoughts? Yeah, I do have thoughts. They made a point straight off the bat that they felt that their advertisers would not want to be placed in a magazine with that name. The name hip replacement is bad. It is bad. It's a, it's... I'm disappointed that all four of you stuck to that title. I think I was the only person who disagreed with the name. But you didn't make yourself... Your voice... I didn't hear anything. I your did. voice must have been lost in translation. I absolutely didn't. I, didn't. I, didn't. Yeah, I definitely did not it's hear happened. it. Did you hear it? You were in her company. She, was, she did say she wasn't agreed with it, but there was no real strength behind it. It's a whisper in the night. Zoe, you started off with a concept of 60s, the new 30s, right? Yeah. Now, when I look at this, I don't see that being projected I in here. I don't either. So, who didn't project it properly. That's actually what I don't understand because I thought we came up with this hit which was the digital font and then I came back and it was Vanity Fair text and I genuinely don't you, understand. You were actually there for that change? You were there for was the you change? Sitting in no, front I of the wasn't. Screen. I was sat you at see, the table behind. I said to you when we put the digital font on, I goes, that doesn't look right. And you said, I agree. I goes, we'll revert back to the text which is more legible. You said, that's okay. No. You, you were there, Zoe? No. Jim, Jim, this must have come about by your direction. It's not exactly how it went, Lord Sugar, but yes, the finished cover uh, has got more of my hand on it than anybody else's. But at all stages of that, Zoe contributed. I personally wanted a different front cover. That photo is awful. This is pretty old fashioned stuff here. I give a brief tighter than the ducks behind and what I wanted from the photo shoot. A young couple who you're younger than their age and the only shot that we could use was that shot. Well, we gave you a selection of photos That's... and that was your choice. And they were based on well, your brief. Well, so let, if let, we let, give you what you no, want, it wasn't you my, can't my brief was single shots as well. Let me give you a I scenario mean, Graham, that I, I showed the piggyback shot on that with a title hip replacement. A piggyback and hip replacement. It's ironic. It probably would have done better. Jim, what did you want to see? I wanted, uh, I wanted people like that, actually. I wanted people like that. But anything that could show a bit of action and activity. And, and I said, fun. guys, you want to show that they're having and fun and they're doing things that aren't in and, their age group. did those photos not contain that? They did. No, they, they really didn't. I wish, they, I wish to God they did. Susan. We had bikes, we had boxing gloves, we had lifts, like princess lifts. They were, like, they, they were there. I took so many different types yeah. of scenes. I think you're missing the point that some of the content in here is condescending to say the least. I mean, technology, you're a bit of a technologist, aren't you? And that's what I mean, yeah. do you think us people of 60 years old are so bleeding thick we that's need why to we know have beginning how to make a phone call? Are you taking the piss or what? I'm supposed to be this 60 thinking that I'm 30. But Lord Sugar, you know, you are in the technology industry. You probably look at the experts. I look at him as a classic example. And he, even he has glided through technology. He'd be insulted if you said to him how to make a bloody phone call. You pitched to three different companies. And I think, Jim, you did two of the pitches, and Glenn, you did one, right? You know, well, actually, uh, this is the essence of the failure of this task, Lord Sugar. Two factors, contribution and cardliness. Contribution, 60%, 25%, 10%, 5%. Cardliness. Cardliness, I'm... Let, I'm... let, me, let me finish. I, I'll, I'll pitch, but you'd be better, Jim. You'd be much better. You'd be... OK, you had five hours to prepare a pitch, but I'd be much better. That next morning, and, I manned up and I took the, it on. The next morning, Susie never stepped up at all. Why didn't you do it, Susan? I did actually put my hand forward. The reason... <laughs> uh, no, it, that's you know what, be unfair. Susan, don't even try... No, but, but please, be, be true to yourself with your answers. Yeah, I will. It's incredibly unfair for you guys to say that I didn't contribute to the pitch. I'm going to make a valid plan, point here because plan, it, it looks as if we're all trying to shoot Bambi. Which one is Bambi, have you identified? Susie is... Is, is Bambi because oh, of her lack of contribution and, and her half hearted so nature. Unfair. It's not unfair, Susie. Susan, I wish it were unfair. It was actually Bambi's mother that got shot. I did honestly put myself forward for the pitch. Others I are saying you did. Say, right? I yeah. did say it. I did honestly Forgive say it. Forgive your dues, you did say, say it, but it was less than half hearted, no disrespect. I felt as if, if I didn't pitch these and I was going to do all three I before you get terribly carried away. <laughs> With the pitching side, Jim, you might be interested to know that one of the major media buying companies, in fact the one that didn't give you any money, yes. said that you were inflexible 
yeah. not prepared to negotiate, and that was a considerable... Yeah, but this is on the prices matter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. What Take discount did you offer them out of interest? They weren't interested in, in taking the full way. They said, they said to us, didn't you what was your bottom best line price? price? And we didn't offer any yeah, discount you, you at didn't, all. You, yeah, nothing. They did not like the title, okay? Perceiving that the second pitch... This is business acumen now, Jim. The business talk in this industry is, what's your discount from the rate card? Yes. Am I hearing things correctly here that you didn't offer them anything at all? We didn't offer... You expected offer... them to pay rate card no, we for did a offer... brand new magazine? We offered them discount. They give us 10 ads, we give them 10%. Ah, one of the people you did get an order from, what did you give them by way of discount? We give them more aggressive discount, yes. Why? Because we were in a more informed position. In other words, you suddenly the penny dropped that you made a cock up on your first pitch. But we Jim, also who's responsible for the failure of the task out of this four then? Who would you say should be going home today? I would happily bring all three back. But if who's responsible for the failure of this task is the meek little mouse and that's Susan, followed closely by Glenn and followed not too far behind by Zoe. I was the project manager that they loved and I led them to defeat. I'm gutted about that. About but love. I'm passionate. Let's not get carried away and love. I mean, you've been doing enough talking today that some of it is on my behalf, really. My question, really, is who you're bringing back with you. I'm certainly bringing back Susan Glenn. OK, Zoe, I'll see you on the next task, OK? Thank you, Lord Trader. OK, you three, step outside and I'll call you back in a bit. I want to talk to Karen and Nick about it. OK. I'll tell you what, he, he, he can talk that gym, can't he? Mm. But the thing is also, he always covers his eyes. He, he never takes a unilateral decision. It's interesting Susan comes into the boardroom time and time again with all these wonderful task-saving ideas. Mm. And... Turned into a mouse. And this is the mouse trap. Yeah. The thing about Glenn is, is he always falls back to, I've never done it before. Mm. This is the first time I've ever done it. To be honest, his, his pitch was very, very average. Lord Sugar will see you now. Right, Jim, you said in a rather derisory manner, referring to Susan as, I think, the mouse, is that right? I didn't mean to be offensive. My point was that... <laughs> with it her... wasn't complimentary, was it? No, but it was to highlight her meek mm. attitude. I think during the tasks, I do try to voice myself, but I think I lack respect from the rest of my team members. But in actual respect, I actually have my own business, and that is something that these two can't say for themselves. They've only ever worked for other people. They've never taken the initiative to work for themselves. Fair comment. The mouse that roared. What do you got to say about that, Jim? I think what she said there now was refreshing. It was interesting to hear the mouse roar. But there's some times where she whispers and maybe goes unheard, and there's some times where she doesn't say the things. That she says she does. Like, for example, I started the discussion about pricing, and Susan said, I brought up pricing. That's just not true. Susan said, let's slash the price. We must slash the price. She was at it all the time. Thank you very much, Nick. Nick, what you're saying and what I'm saying is both true. Yes, oh, I brought really? up, in the third pitch, I brought up the topic on price, and I said, we need to have a discussion around this to see how Susan's we price too aggressively. Susan's still pushing for greater percentage. we got to come away with something. Well, I actually said that, Nick. I said oh. half, half a loaf's better than no bread at all. Then it's your dream to be in business, right? That's 100%. You, say. You, you describe yourself as a barrow boy who'd done well. I've promoted live music. I'm a social secretary at a football club. They both turn money over. And so you're not a bit of a Dell boy then? I'm not a Dell boy. No. I've just managed to... I was wondering if you're one of those people that thought Fools and Horses was a business document. No, and I've reached a position where I work now, which is reserved for those with 15 you're years... You're an engineer? In. Yes. I have started Ventures on my own, and I have not failed in anything I've tried. The pitch that I went forward for, where I've had no experience, we managed to pull money away from. And I think that's pretty good for a first go. I wonder, would Nick agree that when you were looking for your words, I stepped in, and come the negotiation, I led that, and you were... Because, Jim, you're a bit of a control freak, mate. You never let anyone finish a sentence. Do you honestly believe that? To be honest, given the I chance... Had little, of... I had a little... Mm, from Nick here, when you said that. Have you come across him as a bit of a control freak? Yes. You are what I would call a passive-aggressive. Okay. You, you charm people into going along with your ideas. 
Okay, I don't try to deceive anybody, Karen or Nick. I put myself out there. I don't think that these two punters to my left and right can say that, certainly in the oh, stats. I really don't because... Well, you, were the project, you wouldn't let anyone... You know, this is what I'm saying. I wouldn't let it. I asked you to do the pitches. And yes, we make mistakes, and I hold my hand up and say, you know what, maybe if I had more industry experience that I might have given more discount. And I feel the noose tightening on that point. One could argue that is the biggest error. Well, you said the noose is around your neck. You've got her in the mousetrap here. It sounds like a bleed Nagafa Christie play here. Who should get fired then? I'm sure that you're, you're going to exclude yourself. Susie should be fired for the obvious reasons right, okay, that thanks. she's front of house and all style, no substance. All style, no substance. What's your... Every single thing that you asked me to do on this task, I did to the best of my ability. Pitch. And pitch. Do you honestly think that yeah, the fact that I didn't put myself forward for the pitch as strongly as Glenn did, I admit that I lacked a little bit of confidence and I should have put myself forward you lack more. passion, enthusiasm, contribution, getting involved. I feel that throughout this entire process, every single thing that I have done has been overlooked. I don't get given what credit for any of the things What you do is you have a tunnel vision, you put blinkers on and ignored everyone else. And I just want this. remember the bit... I don't Lord believe Sugar, it's one I want minute. your investment more than anyone else in this room. No, that's I untrue. have had that's my untrue. own business. I know what it is like to have a taste of creating something that you've produced yourself. I am 21 and I have had... Stop using your age. It doesn't, doesn't make matter. any difference. I'm saying, We're when, all you, in this when process you guys together. were 21, you didn't have the initiative to do anything that I have done so far. But where's your initiative it's in this all process? Yeah, it's it's about funny. this process. You're all I'm not doing too bad now. I mean, you beat her up before. She's got no support from you lot. But what sticks in my mind is finding yourself in this position all the time yeah. where no one's ever agreeing with what you're saying. I honestly feel that they look at me and they think, young, naive, no experience, let's pick on her, let's get rid of her, she's an easy target. I actually think, Susan, exactly I actually think I Susan, feel. that you're, Every just, you're, time. Just, you're just marginally worse than Glenn, so I'm not picking on you. I, I actually <laughs> say... Gave, that's, that's ridiculous. I, I'm gonna say you are a different class, son. You never make a decision without passing it out to everyone else. You never just say, At the end of the day, Lord idea. Sugar. I did. At, at the end of the day, Lord Sugar, Jim. you want to go no to sugar. someone who no has sugar. natural business acumen. You don't know how to do business with the advertising agents. You didn't even think to discount the price. OK, look, I think I've had enough. Jim, I'm starting to think about whether I want to be in business with somebody who finds it difficult to admit that he's done something wrong. You're great at deflecting questions away. May I speak? No, no, I don't want any more speaking now. It's not once, it's several times that I've been told by Nick in particular that you have this kind of, I suppose the word I'm talking about is manipulative manner to get everybody on side and never make a decision on your own. And anybody that goes into business with me is going to have to make decisions on their own. Glenn, you said that you've run some social club and all that type of thing. I mean, that's not real real business. I've had a problem in the past few weeks grasping what your USP is, really. Susan, it's not an excuse, your age, yeah? Because I was younger than you when I started my business, and no one shoved me around, OK? You want to play in a big person's world, you have to become a big person. Susan, I may have heard it too many times, and you may be too young, but I think that, Glenn, I have never yet come across an engineer that can turn his hands to business. So, Glenn, you're fired. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord Sugar.